Good morning, Get Wrecked for Recovery Crew. So it's day 49 of the Redeeming Eden Cycle Tour. R-E-C-T, Get Wrecked for Recovery. A 48-state, four-year ride for addiction recovery awareness. Each day I pedal for someone who's passed away from addiction, and the whole end goal is to build a rehab. And this is state number 37, North Dakota, on the ride to Ragbri 2022. A 4,500-mile loop around the Midwest, Ohio to Erie Trail, Michigan's Upper Peninsula, west to Glacier National Park, south to Yellowstone, east to Ragbri, the last week of July. And it's all to raise awareness that addiction recovery options are available, that you don't have to die in your addiction. There's churches, celebrate recoveries, and rescue missions all over the nation, all over the world, that just want to help you, talk to you, and love you if you find yourself battling addiction. So yeah, here at the Mosey Inn in Napoleon, North Dakota, had a zero yesterday. The wind was crazy. Never seen, I've seen wind like that, and only in uh, hurricanes in Mobile. It was actually kind of comforting uh, in a way, which is strange. Uh it felt like home in a hurricane. <laughs> so uh, the winds today are predicted to be up to like 24 miles an hour, steady, direct headwind all day. I am not going to even try to pedal hard or stress. Uh, the, it's funny, the mileage from here to the next town is like 26.3 miles, which is like a marathon. And so God was showing me this morning that this is going to be like running a race, um, a long race. It's not a sprint. Uh, and so I'll kind of have to just slow down and pace myself and take my time. That's how you win a marathon. You can't burn out all your energy in the first little bit. Uh, that's no fun. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm probably just going to peg, try and peg five miles an hour and just ride for six. You know, literally spend six hours on the bike seat just moving slowly. Uh, another cool thing that happened yesterday is I heard from a lady named Joyce Lawshe. Totally wrong phone call, like wrong, wrong number phone call. Her husband was trying to call a septic tank guy. Uh, I called, you know, back after I saw that I had the missed call. And then whenever, <laughs> whenever I called, she was just like super talkative, you know, from the south down there from my area. Uh, and she was like, uh, I knew some people that went riding across the United States. And, uh, you know, one was 80 years old and she, she drove and followed her husband and like, we had a good conversation, just random strangers. And the more we talked, she was like, well, what's your name? And I was like, Adam Lineberry. She was like, well, I'm Joyce Lashie. And uh, she said, I knew some uh, some Lineberries uh, out in Plateau, Alabama. I was like, yeah, my uh, grandmother ran a boarding house there. She's like, oh, my goodness, Lydia Harper is your grandmother? I said, yeah. She said, I know Jake. I know Maxine. I know all of them. I was like, oh, my goodness. So, um. It was really neat. Like, she ended up following me on Facebook and YouTube, all the things. Like, uh, so it's cool to have you as a friend, Joyce. Totally random. <laughs> totally random. It's just neat how, even in a hotel room, pinned down by when, God still has a ministry to do and to reach out and to talk to folks. So, it was really neat. Uh, either way, I'm going to get on the road, head down here to the... Um, I was going to get on the road super early this morning, and the winds were already up. So, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to rest and just do this like I, I normally would. Um, but I'm going to head down to the White Maid restaurant, go there, and then uh, eat breakfast, and then get out and start heading down the road. It's 10 o'clock now, uh, so that would mean probably getting on the road by 11. <sighs> I'm really anxious about it, but like I said, it's a, it's a long, slow race to run, so I am prepared. And with that, you'll see more of that preparation in action right about now. All right, so that's the point made. One more time, headed into that wind. 
goodness gracious. I had the uh, Philly cheesesteak and got a uh, chicken or a cheese quesadilla for the ride. So headed over to the gas station to get a couple of Coca Colas and shove them on the bike somewhere. And see what I got against this wind. Here goes nothing. Okay, so even though it is incredibly windy today, can you see this? Like, I'm a little chilly, but the sunlight feels so, so good. I could take a nap right here. I had to get down into this ditch right here uh, and lay my bike down. It actually fell over. Uh, but I had to get down here into the ditch to eat. I had a uh, cheese quesadilla uh, and a Coke from the white maid but um yeah i've just been like sitting here and watching the wind blow across the grass it has been a fight to get here but this is one of those days where it just really feels like you know that song the hills are alive with the sound of music ah! <laughs> yeah i had to do that i mean it's just that kind of day how can i not like get out be happy and be free as hard as I'm fighting to go into this wind like it has been wild I think I was at 5.4 miles an hour average in my lowest gear yeah 24 mile an hour steady headwinds is just about as much as I can handle if it's any higher than that like I'm going in my lowest gear and I'm making it uh, but if it was any higher than that like it's it's forcing my bike to do funny things so I'm going to get back on the road now, as you can see the wind whipping through the grasses here, and you'll see more of that right about now.
This is so hard to do. Like, it just doesn't stop. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It, it like, I'm lamenting. Like, that's, uh, it's, it's some serious, like, lamentations. Uh, some of the psalms, like, this is, this is a struggle. I am now, like, deciding that if there's wind over 20 miles an hour that's a headwind, ah, I'm going to take a zero like it's a snow day or, you know, blizzard day or lightning day or something. I can't do this. I mean, I, I'm doing it. But I'm 19 miles in and it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Like between, you know, eating before I left and having to stop and eat a full meal at 12 miles in and change a GoPro battery at 12 miles in that would usually make it to 25. Uh, it's wild. Like I'm gonna have done six hours on the bike to go 30 miles. And if we take that back to that other day where I had the tailwind of this speed, I would have gone 105. Like, it just almost seems unfair. You know, a false weight uh, or balance is an abomination to the Lord. And I know he's got to weigh these winds out somehow, but the headwinds just feel so unfair. Okay, so y'all are not gonna believe this, but I was just recording the end of that, you know, that video part where I was riding down the road and lamenting over the wind that I can't do it. Like, it's just too strong today. And so Lauren ends up pulling up. He's uh, like helping his son move a tractor down the road. And he's telling me about a town, the Hazleton, where I was headed, that they've got a nice park, showers, a uh, place that I can eat, a grocery store, all that kind of stuff. And so he heads off and goes his separate way. He actually gave me a donation and then went off his separate way. I, we traded contact info. And so about 45 minutes later, he rolls back up and he's like flagging me down. Tell him about it, Lauren. Well, I went to Hazleton and to get my supplies for the front field. And uh, I better go check out the Hazleton Park because just make sure that's open, and which I thought it was. But here I pull up there and uh, the showers or the shower building and the toilets and all that stuff are locked, paddle locked. But there was somebody working at the mowing lawn, so I went and checked with him. He said, no, oh, they're not going to open for another week because it's it's not that time of year up here for campers yet. So I thought, oh, shucks, I guess that ain't going to work. So then I went up town, well, make sure the grocery store, because it's always open, but this particular day, I guess, they closed early. So he couldn't get no groceries. So <laughs> I'm going like, he's probably thinking, you know what? That North Dakota redneck just told me a couple lies. And... <laughs> <laughs> but no, I uh, drove back home and uh, he was, I thought I actually was going to meet him in town, which I couldn't find him. But so I headed home to the field again and here he still pedaled his bike. Oh yeah. I was going so slow today. So I said, well, you know, better, I better tell him that nothing's open and that uh, he's more than welcome to come out to the farm and stay the night and take a hot shower and eat some uh, homemade food or uh, my wife's homemade food, uh, home cooked food, I should say. It was so good. And then I said, hey, have you ever been in a tractor? You wanna go look at a tractor seeding spring wheat? And he goes, never did that before. So. <laughs> anyway, he, uh, I took him out there and I guess he had a, had a fun time, so he'll probably show you some videos on that. I did, and you'll we'll add that in right here, and then we'll be right back in just a minute. Those tanks in the back have what's, what's called, it's, it's a liquid nitrogen, but it's in a, a very cold state. Okay. It's, it's dangerous. If you get anything on it, it'll freeze your skin. It'll take your lungs out. It'll make you go blind. 
It's dangerous stuff, but if it's handled properly, it's as safe as anything else. Gotcha. It's kind of like a gun. Right, right, right. Anyway, that's the nitrogen. The middle of the black tank has your seed and your dry fertilizer on. There's a fan. It meters it out through these meters. That's how many pounds you're putting down per acre. It will, uh, you probably get a better view if we do it this way. So uh, I got the old steering wheel here. This is Nick, which is Charlotte and Warren's son. Uh, he's showing me the tractor, but I wanted to record this so Liam, Kirsten, and Clark, y'all can see that I've drove a tractor before. So <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. And so yeah, that was amazing. Like seeing the tractor, seeing all the, the, the wheat, how it goes in the ground, all the nitrogen, how that works. Nick really walked me through all kinds of different things about the tractor, about what was going on with the production, the grain bins, like all the different things that were a part of that whole operation. It's just really phenomenal what you do and you guys are feeding the world. So thank you so much for that work that you do. It's amazing. That's what we do. <laughs> but yeah, so Lauren's let me stay here in his man cave. It's got a shower, it's got a TV, it's got, uh, it's way better than the tent I was going to stay in tonight, so <laughs> I am so thankful for you. Thank you so much for your hospitality, your more, generosity. More than welcome. And I told him, I said, the reason that that wind was so bad today, because if it wouldn't have been as terrible as it is, he probably would have pedaled right through and we never would have met, or that it blew so dang hard that he was happened to meet me at that particular time because if he would have been another half mile back I guess I should say you know later I would have never met him <laughs> <laughs> perfect timing it was it was just like it was a bicycle I mean, he's only like 200 yards from me and I, I well, wave to him and talk to him and here we are <laughs> well, I'm thankful that you did You're thank welcome. you so much again I love you brother I appreciate everything you guys have done thank you and uh and Charlotte You're so welcome much. and uh, I wish you the best on your trip and may God bless you awesome thank you so is that not wild or what like the whole day pushing into the wind literally half a mile before I meet Lauren I'm lamenting like I'm just so done with the wind I'm looking at like tomorrow's forecast I'm seeing that it's 24 miles an hour going into Bismarck. 
and I'm just like almost panicking a little in my soul. Uh, that's the only way I know how to describe it. Lauren pulls up in the road. We chat. He heads out and does his own thing. Like, I totally think, you know, that's the end of that whole story. I'm going to, to Hazleton, and I'm going to camp. As I'm going down the road, my Garmin, the screen goes completely blank. So, like, I pull over, and I'm sitting there messing with it, trying to get it to work. Turns out I accidentally uh, trigger the uh, emergency assist feature. It texts my wife, and it texts my pastor. And so, Christy calls, Adam, are you okay? Like, your Garmin's saying you've had a wreck or that you've triggered your emergency assist. I was like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I can't see the screen. I don't know what's happening. Like, it's not telling me anything. It's just blank. It's on. Like, I can see it's backlit, but there's no words, no nothing. So while I'm talking to her, David calls. And this is all on, like, speakerphone, wind blowing. I can't hear what's going on. I'm exhausted. So David, my pastor, calls. He's like, Adam, are you all right? And I was like, I'm okay. He's like, are you sure you're okay? I was like, I'm totally okay. Like, uh, my Garmin's messing up. I don't know what's going on. I'm on the other line with Christy. While I'm talking to her, uh, I get a text message from Emily. And Emily's like, hey, are you okay? And I was like, how is this happening? Like, what is going on? And so, like, uh, I end up getting off the phone with Christy. I end up telling Emily, you know, hey, I'm okay. She's like, well, I got an email. So, because she's helping with the bike route navigating, um, she is logged into, like, my account and because of that, she's getting my emails. And, like, my email to me about triggering the Garmin Assist popped up on her phone. When she called, I was on the phone with Christy and David, so I got, she got, like, the, you know, straight-to-voicemail thing. She was like, that's never happened. So she immediately messaged Christy and was like, have you heard from Adam? Is Adam okay? And Christy was like, yeah, yeah, I'm on the phone with him. You know, like, it, it was just this wild, maybe 30-minute process that it took um, between meeting Lauren the first time and then getting there when he was pulled over on the side of the road the second time. Uh, GoPro battery had died. I didn't get the second, you know, encounter with him. Uh, it was just wild how all of that time worked out for Lauren to be able to go into town, check things out, come back, uh, and meet me and be like, hey, look, this is what's going on, and, you know, this is what I've got uh, that I'd, I'd like to help you with. Came back, his wife made chicken, uh, and rice, and, like, uh, roasted green beans, and then, like, this bread with this strawberry rhubarb homemade jelly, uh, this caramel dessert. We go out there to the field, I get to ride with Nick and see, like, all of just, uh, that was beautiful. That whole process of planting spring wheat, and what goes into that, it just really opened my eyes to what farmers do in America. I mean, I see it down south, but like to actually get in the tractor and ride and get to show Liam, Kirsten, and Clark how cool that was. Super fun day for your dad. Um, I could not escape the significance of the fact that it was wheat that they were planting too, and that's so biblical. Uh, you know, sowing seed and, and reaping a harvest, and like it was just a really... I felt God's presence in that whole scenario and situation. Uh, it was just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Got back and we ended up, and at the end of this video, I'll kind of show. Uh, we got to see some deer. I got to see some pheasants. I didn't get the pheasants on film. Uh, but he's got like a conservation area of his land back here. Um, they've got just so much land. It's He's pointing out his neighbors and like, you know, he's like, look at that grain bin on the horizon. And then, like, I'd look at the trees and, like, the tree line of the property. He's like, that's my next neighbor that way. I'm like, how far is that? Like, three and a half miles. The scale and, you know, the size of how expansive it is out here is wild. But to be in that tractor and, like, look at the freshly tilled ground and then, like, the ground that we were tilling and planting and, you know, adding nutrients to... There's a lot to unpack there spiritually for me for weeks, weeks, no doubt about it. Um, got back here, you know, I was able to take a shower. They washed my clothes like that. I put them in the washing machine, but Miss Charlotte ended up uh, washing and drying them. I forgot all about them. Uh, so blessed, so blessed. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Thank you so much, Nick, for showing me 
uh, the operations on the tractor. Um, just a phenomenal day. Phenomenal day. And then the timing of it all. I mean, had I not pressed the Garmin button on accident, I wouldn't have stopped like, like a half a mile after I had prayed and said, God, I can't do this. Not only that, tomorrow, Lauren is going to take me through the winds uh, to Bismarck. Like He's going to drive me and show me things uh, along the way that I get to film, that I get to you know put up. It's not going to be a ride for a person for the day. Um, I don't know if I'll add it to the next day, to day 50, or if I'll just like do a not day 50 video like I do sometimes. Every prayer I had with it was answered today. There is not a single thing that, that God left undone. I am blown away. I know this is a long video, but I could not say it. I am so blown away by God's goodness in Hazleton, North Dakota. So I'll end the video here even though I don't want to, but I have to. If you know anybody who's passed away from addiction in any form or fashion, please drop their name in the comments or find me through the Papa link in the description and I would love to ride for your person and celebrate their life with you for a day. If you know anybody who's actively addicted, anybody in general, share this with them. Uh, thank you so much, Get Wrecked for Recovery crew, every one of you that is liking every video, commenting on every video, sharing every video, and those of you that have subscribed to the YouTube channel. The analytics love it, I do too, and who knows, it might save a life. Uh, don't forget, Redeeming Eden is a nonprofit ministry through International Gospel Outreach. That link is also in the Papa link. You can go there and find out more about Redeeming Eden and about the Cody Jordan Forever Funeral Fund, uh, which is a fund I started to help families that lose loved ones to addiction with paying funeral costs. So yeah, uh, from the man cave here at Lauren's Farm, near Hazleton, North Dakota. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. I'll see you later. Have a good night. We had over a hundred of them wintering in the back here this winter. Wow.